That was quick chicka. I've only been streaming for like two minutes. Hello. Uh, this isn't a tutorial video as such, just a hangout, I guess. Just making an accessory and just hanging out. Is going to use a female accessory and make a hat. And the stream is being recorded locally, so hopefully, if the stream is bad, the local recording should be okay. Don't often get the opportunity to do this of just making something. So, thought it would be interesting to just capitalize on that and stream. That is super tiny. Insert, inset. Extrude. Given the number of tutorials that are written for Blender, don't actually get that often an opportunity to use it. 
2.8 in particular. So that is um, to rotate some of these edges to reorganize the orientation of the faces so that we can then This then just makes it easier to deform the mesh without necessarily collapsing it completely. So using the knife tool What we can then do is just collapse, not collapse, um, 
to shape some of these. Because if you don't do that, if you don't uh, subdivide, and by that we mean just adding more structure to the inside of the, well, in this instance it's a hat, what often happens is that if you start changing the outer edge, it'll collapse the inside edge because it's all attached. It's all one unit. So always a good idea to, whoops. Roughly divide the inside edge, uh, inside face. There's really too many too many loops, so you can get rid of some of these. So we can either double chap double chap double tap the G key and edge slide and that will collapse the face, but then we have to remove doubles. Or we can press the X key or the or the delete key and dissolve edges, and that'll do a similar thing. So we can do that selectively. This is a 12 12 sided cylinder, but we only really need six for the top. So we can dissolve some of these edges. and create a six-sided cylinder shape. So that's the front. That's better. Let's get rid of that and use proper edge smoothing. So I'm going to mark these edges as sharp. So that's control E or mark sharp. And then use the edge split modifier. Is there.
have to watch out for the head because we have to accommodate the hair. So switch to wireframe and this will help. Whoops. So we're clipping really close to the head there at the front. Whoops. And you can't always see that in solid mode or textured mode or whatever mode you're in other than wireframe. So and this is why hats and headgear is particularly difficult with IMVU because the heads are so big. So one of the um, one of the tricky things with I, I view with Blender, um, and this is why it's a good idea to get used to doing this. Although Blender now has these transform widget buttons, uh, yes, they were available in previous version. So now that they're clearly available, you can speed up your creation process by getting used to the shortcuts and the thing with the shortcuts that's different with other applications for as far as I'm aware is that if you press so we're in the universal at the moment so if I switch to so this is the move or transform translate what's this one called 
transform, I think was the old name, but it's called move now. Uh, so the move widget is active, but if you press the R key, which is rotate, well, you can't see it on that one, so I'll select two. So we've got the um, move widget. If we press the R key, we can rotate the selection, but the move widget is still active. It doesn't switch to the appropriate widget tool. Now this can be an advantage or a disadvantage depending on your perspective, but it does mean that you don't have to keep pressing the or clicking the uh, widget buttons. So that's scale, but we can press the G key and move the object as opposed to using the widget to scale. So it's very handy to get used to the shortcut keys and it's worth doing, but it takes practice not to build up the muscle memory. Right, so that's a hat. Which is hat? So we need to put a material on this. Which is hat zero square bracket zero square bracket. And again, we're using nodes because it's now Blender 2.8. We can't use the old style of texturing. Uh, so that's shading. Scale out because our view is massive. And there is our default materials. So all we need to do to this is add image texture, drop that in place, create a new image. So this will likely be 512, whoops, so 512, 5256, and its name will be which is hat. Which is hat. EV grid, no alpha, okay. And then we connect this texture to the material, click the color, output node and drop that on the base color input node. And there is our texture, but we have to UV map this because it's gone all squiffy. So that's our basic material. That's all we need. Uh, UV editing. So what we'll have to do is probably unwrap this properly. Uh, so actually that's a bit um, let's go back into here edit mode create our quads join those two together so that's alt j or where is it um, where's it gone Oh, there it is. Trista quads. What we can do is add an extra loop cut there. So it's not so um, angular. There we go.
and across the front we only want to do it to a couple of edges so select edge subdivide and that will divide them switch to vertex mode makes the hat a little more rounded. Right, so UV mapping. So the default map is what's generated during well when the object when the initial object is dropped into the scene. Blend will automatically unwrap it and it'll unwrap it as a cylinder, which is what the object is. But what we can do with this is one of two things. There are a couple of ways we could unwrap this actually, because so let's do it the switch to wireframe. Right, so what you can do is with objects like this. Add a seam, edge, mark a seam. So what that does, or what that will do, is whilst we've got three elements at the moment, that, what we've just done by adding this seam, will create two, and it'll smash these all up. And that changes the way the texture is mapped. So we now have that. So depending on your... Not your skill level, but the... Because you've got to think of the people that are deriving from this. So this would be very easy to derive from. But the problem is that you'll have nice detail along the bottom. along this bottom section but as it moves up the hat it'll start to distort because this space is this tiny tiny little thing don't know if you can see that so I'll move that up there that's that tiny little thing which depending on how the thing should be textured Might get some complaints, but what you can do is split this you want to split it all the way around just down the you just want to split it down the back so we can split that down the back edge mark seam unwrap this or just UV unwrap the, the shortcut key for that is U for universal and that changes the map to that so you get better texture distribution but it means the person that's deriving from this will have to be more attentive to how they paint their textures. Actually, that's not too bad. Or an alternative would be to unwrap. So we keep the split down the back of the hat. These edges, keep those. But what we can do as a third alternative mark seam ok 
get rid of these two. Clear seam. And what this will do is it'll give us three components. So we've got the top of the hat, the underside of the hat, and the rim or brim. But doing it that way, you have less texture space available. And that's quite complicated to texture for derivers. So, but it does mean, whoops, it does mean that you have a clear area for textures to paint for the, the top of the hat, which is probably going to be the most visible, a defined area for the bottom of the hat, and then the, the peak, or whatever these are called, top of the hat. So, choices, choices. Whoops. That's a bit wide. Let's narrow that down a little bit. too much because we're going to start clipping into the head. But you'll notice as you are as you are unwrapping and texturing your object, you'll notice things like that that'll sometimes need to be changed or modified in your mesh after the fact. So let's, I think, let's go with the previous unwrap. So remove this. that and unwrap layout right save this save as So that's the modeling done. Let's do something else to this actually. What we can do where's vertex painting? There's vertex painting. Tools. We can add some shading to this. Switch on wireframe so that we can see what we're doing. 
There we go. And then some on the top. And this is just a cheap way of adding shadows to your mesh without making it overly complicated from a texturing point of view. doesn't look as though Blender 2.8 has a robust a vertex painting system. Ooh, we haven't collapsed that UV there. Uh, exit edit mode. Uh, vertex paint edit mode. Make sure everything is selected and mesh cleanup merge by distance. That is now remove doubles. There we go. Might have to check the UV map now. Yep. UVs snap to pixels, corner. Right. That still doesn't look as though it's as shaded as it should be. And I think that is to do with, oh, yeah, it's just to do with the way that... Oh, well, that's a shame. Does it not show vertex colours in... Huh. It doesn't show vertex colours in the normal display mode. Which is a little odd. Right, so save the file again. So save as incremental. We can turn this into an accessory hat now. So make sure everything's selected. Vertex group. Double click. Attachment root. Assign. Double check. Yep. And then we need to assign this to oh, rename it. So which is hat not dot mesh. So hide that. Hide that. Hide that. And we want head. So, what we want to do now is link up the mesh with the head bone. So, select mesh, um, modifiers, 
and then it said mortifiers. Modifiers, add armature. We need to shift that up to the top. So we click these buttons. And then rather than trying to find the, because there are a lot of armatures in the accessory file, rather than doing that, we can click the eyedropper and just click on the armature we want to use as the target or as the object and it'll do it it'll drop it in there so if we now select the armature switch to pose mode we should find it controls our hat awesome right so save the file Save and then export. So exit edit mode, uh, pose mode, file, export, FBX. And for this, we want to make sure that selected objects is deselected for accessories because IMVU and Blender don't play along too well for this for some reason. Up for accessory items, uh, FBX geometry. Modifiers, yep, keep that. Disable, add leaf bounds, animation, blah blah. We don't need those, but leave them. Doesn't do anything. And then export. And then import this into IMVU. So create mode. Derive a new product. This is an accessory. It's not a hat, it's an accessory. Um, go. So we've got the default, which is a pair of glasses or shades. Import the FBX, load FBX. Where is it? Which is nose, which is hat three. There we go. Always select the one that starts root node forward slash or backslash. Select. It'll give us our mesh that's associated with the object. Click configure. Apply scale 0 0.01. And we want the mesh ID to replace the glasses. So this is always number two of the female avatar. And then import. Oh, has he got out? Yes texture's coming that's okay import changes and apply and there is our witch's hat so let's see if it's brought in our we don't want two sided we don't want that we want vertex colors yes it has excellent Meshes, how big is that? Two by two, why is it two by two? Let's add a texture and see what it does. Donut. Nice. I could add some detail to this, so. Let's add, save this, save as so what we can do is edit mode we can use some of the geometry we've already got around the bottom here. Duplicate that. So that's Shift D. And then we can scale it. Actually, I wonder if uh, what we can do here is Extrude along normals. I 
and that'll create a little sort of belt type thing around the hat. Let's add whoops. What's that done? Ah, so it's left the it's left the old faces in place, so hide those. to get rid of these or well if you want to keep it low poly let's get rid of these oh that's the inside all right so we don't need that so we can delete that Actually, I wonder, Alt H. Oops. separate this where is that split just make this a bit bigger because what we can do is yeah right so Oops. All we need now is a buckle. So use the geometry we've got in place already. And the quick and dirty way of doing this. In fact, actually, the quick and way of dirty of doing this generally would be to not do that, so get rid of those or detach them. So that's the P key, which should be separate. Where is separate? There it is, separate by selection.
So we can leave a, what we can do is use a flat plane or a flat band, band of surfaces because if someone wanted to put some patterns on this that had transparency or opacity in it, you'd be able to see through it and to the hat below. So we want to keep that. So on a similar vein, what we can do, select some of the structure we've already got in place, duplicate that again, so that's Shift D or, uh, where is it? Oh, duplicate Shift D. And we can use this, make that big, as our buckle. So we want to turn these to quads just to make this easier to manage. Whoops. So let's double tap the G key again, and what that's doing is sliding along those edges that are available. Right, so we have to UV map that as well. So UV edit, we use the same texture. So what we want to do is we want to keep the original UVs that we created. to keep the shape of those so move them to one side select each so we've got the UVs being selected using an island which will select the entire uh, independent well it's not independent but it'll select the entire section of the UV and press the P key and that pins the vertices or vertexes of the UV map and that will then mean that we can oh we may not even have to do that so that's the UV for the the thingy me bob and that's the buckle yeah so let's um, because we want this to be easy to unwrap this section we've got here so Unwrap those two sections. Whoops. Make the buckle bigger. And then here comes the tedious bit. We have to straighten this up. We have to do that by selecting each of the vertexes individually and aligning them. the what's going on in the 3d view as you move the vertices or vertexes how it distorts the map or the mapping
push that a little bit. Uh, scale. Where's the scale widget gone? Those widgets should be displayed by default, but they are not, which is terribly, terribly annoying. But what should happen, there's probably a setting somewhere, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But what it is, is that um, you can press these, press, you can click these, activate them, and a widget appears, not quite like it is in the 3D view. But it's similar. Uh, it gives you a um, a two D, almost an image like an image editor. But it means that you don't have to keep using the shortcut keys because there are widgets available now. So we need to straighten this up, and make it easier to use, or to to um, unwrap. Whoops. And this is why it's a good idea to use the. How wide is that? Oh, it's basically a square. This is why it's a good idea to use the grid when you initially unwrap your objects because you can assess the distribution of the texture across your mesh properly. Alright, so that's our bits. Drop them in place. I wonder, this, the underside of the hat isn't going to be seen that much, so we can make that a bit smaller. Give us a bit of room for the ribbon. So let's save this. Save, save as number four. And because we've played around with the geometry, of the mesh structure, we may need to go back to object data properties and reassign the vertex groups, uh, the vertex group to make sure that everything is associated with it. That's done. Just save over the file we just created and then export. Same again. Don't need the animations. Add leaf burns, disable. Geometries, add modifiers. That's okay. Selected objects, disable. This is number four. Export. Mm, that was quick. Let's create a new project. Accessory. And go.
fbx import load fbx which is hat number four root and it'll sometimes as uh, on the previous attempt root was down at the bottom so imvu sometimes reorganizes the presentation of these depending on whatever criteria oh why are the two meshes Oy. so we have to it's probably picked up on one of the things that we hid yes it has has it where's it gone so let's just hide that for a moment and get rid of that so delete So we should only have our witch's hat. That looks okay. That looks okay. So save over that and re export. Export FBX for double check our settings and export. IMVU. Uh, we can still use the same project we just created. So FBX import load FBX, which is hat four. There we go. Two bones, one mesh. Which is hat mesh. Import. Mesh ID is two. Scale zero point zero one. and import and there is our hat so meshes add our texture apply and there is the witch's hat with the belt buckle on it I'm not quite sure why they have belt buckles on there but save as so this is witch's hat Oops, which is hat version 2. So, of course, because this is a single image and it's going to require people to have a map to work with, let's get rid of these two things and add the vertex colors because we like vertex colors. nice just save over that so to make this easier for people to derive from and paint their textures we need to create a texture map so although the image itself is just quite a plain in this instance it's just a plain uh, 256 by 512 and that's mapped fine to aid people deriving and painting from this what they'll want is the wireframe oops which is this thing which is basically the uv map that's that's all it is so when people talk about texture maps this is what they're really talking about it's just a wireframe so in Blender, we select everything, and then from the in the uh, UV editor, UV menu, export UV layout, which is at mesh.png, five two five six. So we've got sizes, and then opacity, which is well, we'll see. Uh, is it zero or one? I think it's one. Let's try that. And just export. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Let's call this UV. UV. Oops. UVmap.png. 
export. So opening up the image editor. which is now Affinity Photo because Coral's not very nice anymore. Close. So where did that image go? Where or where? Accessories. There it is. Yeah, so that's the texture map. So what you would do is save this out as a JPEG or PNG and provide that on your product page for derivation. So let me just save that, save as. And that's your texture maps. Let's just save over that again. Save. Export. Oops. Don't save over the top of that. And that's what you would provide for your drivers on your product page which we can then actually so let's just drop a color on this uh, so how do we do that fill it with a color Where's the filter? Oh. Still getting used to this program. Oh, that'll do. So let's save that. Save as. Uh, Export. Oops. exported that and then we can use that as our texture there it is add that to the hat and there is our hat with our texture obviously you do all your painting and stuff And then upload. Just save this, which is hat So there is a hat accessory, not in time at all for Halloween, which has just passed. So this is a fashionably and unfashionably late which with a hat. Hmm. 
noise. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was just a, uh, a quick... A quick, um... What's the word? Thingamajig. That was a quick thingamajig. Uh, hopefully we'll be doing more of these. These quick, small projects. So that's an hour long. Ish. To make a hat accessory item for either you. And obviously if it's the one tip depending on the type of accessory it is, when you import it into IMVU, if you want this to be usable for male and female accessories, if it's a hat or a hairpiece or uh, anything to do with the head in particular, in config you would normally add the PID for the male avatar, which is 191. But for these kinds of things you can't do that because the shape of the mesh is different the male is slightly larger and uh, I think it's a bit more forward set than the female avatar. But the point is that if you add this to the male avatar, as it currently stands, as it's made for the female avatar, it will not fit properly. So you would have to load in. You would have to load in. Did we save it? Let's just save over this. Save. You'd have to load in, where is it, the male accessory and append, append accessories, where's the witch's hat, witch's hat, object, now did we call it witch's hat? Yes, we did, witch's hat. And you'd have to double check. That looks a bit big on his head. I didn't know the female avatar had a bigger head than the male avatar. Thought it was the other way around. But you might have to um, make some adjustments to the mesh to make sure that it fits the male avatar. So whether it's a hat, I think there are a couple of other accessory items or types of items that you'd have to do the same thing with but that does mean essentially basically so the point is rambly 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 the point is that you have to make a separate hat for the male avatar and then when you import that you derive from the male accessory and then you'll have the appropriate um, product ID associated with it Compatible body pattern PID. So, yeah, there we go. Some things to be, some tips there. Bits of information. Hopefully, we'll be doing more of these. Right. So, adieu, as they say in Finland. <laughs>